It's Red Eye Radio. Gary McNamara and Eric Harley talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or you're just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. This is Red Eye Radio. All across America. We are Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Harley and I'm Gary McNamara. Welcome. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Well, here we go. Now we've got uh, the uh, both campaigns are set. Here we go. Uh, Here we- Governor of uh, Minnesota, Tim Waltz, uh, is Kamala Harris's uh, pick. Interesting. Uh, you know, we've gone through all the discussions uh, uh, on it and why. We've played all the different audio cuts, whether it was Van Jones talking about the anti-Semitism of the Democratic Party, uh, possibly being a reason uh, uh, for it. And of course it was. It was, of course, that was a, a consideration. Uh, but I think the other thing that was missed on it, because you and I have gone through, who were the other possibilities? You know, Mark Kelly was one. Right. And Josh Shapiro, uh, again, uh, from uh, from Pennsylvania. His approval numbers in Pennsylvania, very good. A state that they want. Same thing with Arizona. Right. Minnesota, you look at it and you go, whoa, the whole thing is, well, he, you've heard this a lot. He's a Midwestern dad. That doesn't get you anywhere, by no, the way. No, no. I was thinking, really? That's gonna mid- he's, a, he's a Midwestern kind of dad. What's going to matter is the outrageous things that he has said. What's going to matter is when people ask the question, oh, so he was behind not sending the National Guard into the insanity uh, in, uh, in, in Minneapolis. What will come to the forefront, because... Republicans will make sure it comes to the forefront. If not, they deserve to lose. Yep. Uh, Because if you want our judgment here, our judgment of this campaign right now, now that everything is set, I did see something. What if Walt polls very low and he is viewed as horrible? Do they replace him by Friday? (laughs) I (laughs) I saw that. I was like, oh, my God, saw that online yesterday. Like, geez, the guy's been announced for an hour. Uh, but he is as rad- radical as you can get. You have the most radical, and and we can prove it based on where they stand on the issues. But this is the most radical uh, Democrat nomination. Oh yeah, in my lifetime, I I don't know one that would be more radical. I I don't know based a more on radical they, ticket based on where they stand on the the issues. The question is, does this mean that they're not going to campaign? The way that she they initially you know came out uh, a couple of weeks ago, which was okay. She flip flops on everything. Well, and, I mean, her ads out there, uh, you know, trying to position her as stronger on the border than Donald Trump. Do you pull those ads, or do you get Tim Walls in line? They what what got me is immediately they went out and attacked you know Trump mm-hmm. on the border and on the economy. Right, his strongest points now. You're saying to yourself, all right, we have to attack his strongest points. But the fact is you don't offer an alternative except we're here, we're young, and we're young. I'm younger than him, and there's the future. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm loud. Yeah. I, and and so I don't know if they're going to stick with it. Can you really have him out there? Uh, I saw on... Uh, I think it was uh, CNN already questioning Harris isn't talking. Is this going to hurt her? That's once you have a thing, once you get to the point where it gets to be after the convention and she still hasn't done an interview, I don't know if it gets to that point, but I think those questions will start now. You are the nominee. You need to start talking. Kareem Jean-Pierre was asked, where's the president? We're at the verge of war here. Yeah. Right. Well, why is he not explaining these things? And she said, well, you've seen him. What do you mean we've seen yeah, him? Where? I, I, we've seen a, a picture of him or right. or something. No, we, we want to find out what's on his mind. And Republicans are going to make, they better make this case. Otherwise, again, they deserve to lose that this is now where Democrats are. Democrats actually don't want to be cross-examined on where they stand on the issues. And Trump should be out there every day. And again, I believe that every rally he does. If you, if you want the template for success for Donald Trump, he needs to follow what J.D. Vance did the last 24 hours. J.D. Vance was right on point on everything. 
Trump needs to give 20-minute speeches off the teleprompter, no ad-libbing. Yeah, and J.D. Vance is scheduled to be in all the same states that the the other ticket is going to be in over the next few days. I don't know if it's at the same time, but he's going to visit all those seven states. They're doing seven states in five days. You're going to have to get you're going to have to get out there. And again, just, well, as we've been saying for years, point. 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 But right now is is also the time for the ads. Yeah. You've got to flood the airwaves. It doesn't matter. I know I know they get into the, you know, look, we gotta find the right reach and the demographics. We're looking to get the independent and convince the independent. You get the ads out there, and so many people on social media are going to share those ads for you in your base. But I mean, you flood the airwaves. You flood digital with those ads. In their own words. In their own words. And they're writing themselves. Yeah, you and I were looking at a, uh, a spot earlier, a commercial earlier, and we said, no, 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 no. Just don't have a narrator talking about stuff. Every ad has to have in their own words. Yeah. If you call, if you say Kamala Harris is radical, then the next thing is something she says mm-hmm. that is radical. There is, as I said, you look at this campaign, and it's very simple. The polls show Trump isn't winning. But on every major issue that America views as extremely urgent and important now, Trump has landslide winning numbers on the actual issues. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And so what you need to do is tell everyone, this is where I stand. They don't. Anything else that does not focus in on that direction is a complete waste of time. And as I said, right before we went to the top of the hour, I can't believe how many Republicans I know that are most loyal Trump supporters and have been since the very beginning, absolutely furious with him, livid over his Brian Kemp comments. Mm -hmm. Saying it doesn't matter what happened in 2020. He's popular. He was willing to work with you. You need Georgia. Stop it. If you don't win, shooting off your mouth means nothing. Winning means everything. These are some of the most loyal Trump supporters that have stuck with him from day one that have donated. And I sense that if Trump doesn't straighten it up, they feel a sense of betrayal. We're working like crazy for you, and you're out there just free freewheeling it and saying stuff that has nothing to do with us winning the damn election. And that's why, you know, we looked at J.D. Vance yesterday and said everything he said was right, was absolutely the correct way. Everything was based on the radicalism of the specific issues and what the Democrats have said themselves, what Harris has said herself, what Waltz has said himself. And that's how you win. You have no chance of winning any other way. Well, what you were handed yesterday is a gift, another gift, and that is Waltz's entire tenure as governor and and what has happened with his state while he's been governor the record is very clear by the way the images are everywhere not just stuff in his own words but the images behind it and minnesota has fallen under his reign as governor these are their records these are the current right now the current records of each of them. Her as a part of the Biden administration and him as governor of Minnesota. And now, man, it's 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 not like a candy store. It's like a mall filled with candy. Just walk in and, and pick it up and you've got it. It's right there. And it's the reality right now, I think, that it is it, it, it's also beyond what they're doing it's beyond it, it goes to
to what they want to keep doing. Because this isn't about any more four more years of Biden. It's the acceleration of the radical agenda under Kamala Harris that you should be worried about. The the one thing that you saw over the last week or two is this big sigh of relief. Okay, at least we got somebody on stage who can stay awake, who's fairly coherent, but you're still stuck with somebody who can't speak. You got somebody who can't talk about their own convictions. And it's pretty clear if you watch what happened last night on stage, she's not doing the talking. Her new Veep pick is. So there was this sigh of relief. But she may have peaked whatever political bounce she got. That may be over, but don't count on it. You got to fight until November 5th, all the way through November 5th. When you see the fact that she didn't pick uh, uh, Kelly of Arizona. Now, the thing about Kelly is he doesn't say much. He doesn't speak much. And so there might have been a fear that even though she could have used, well, he's perceived as being more moderate on the border. He doesn't really talk a lot. Mm-hmm. Can you remember the last time you remember him speaking? No, it's it's I can't. it is in, in fact when he when he responds to a question uh over the last couple of years on anything that was, you know, the the administration was doing, well, I support the administration. Out of the blah blah blah. I mean it was it was nothing and that's a great point. And maybe that's what they looked at it's like, no, we need somebody who can get out there and be loud. And you can't have a person of few words. You got to get somebody, in, and this is exactly what they've got. They couldn't go with Shapiro because you can't have somebody who's Jewish on the ticket. That's where the Democrats are. That's clear. And Pennsylvania is a battleground state, and they couldn't do that. Wow. Wow. And so there you have it. I mean, it was never going to be Buttigieg, by the way. They put Buttigieg on the short list, you know, just to show there was consideration. That was never going to happen. I'm reading this from Matt Lewis from TheHill.com. Picking Tim Waltz was Kamala Harris's first campaign mistake. When I heard that Vice President Harris had selected Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz over Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro as her running mate, the first thing that hit me was the that of revered baseball manager Casey Stengel. Can't anybody here play this game? Not to say that Waltz is the worst choice in the world. Well, no. I'm trying to think who might be worse on the Democrat side yeah. uh, based on just where he stands on his on the issues. Goes, but Shapiro is the governor of Pennsylvania, probably the most important state for Harris, where he has a 64% approval rating. That fact alone yeah. might have made the difference. Waltz, conversely... Governor, governor of Minnesota, a state that Harris should easily win. And while Waltz's uh, Midwestern image might play well in the so-called blue wall states, it's not the same as being a popular governor of one of those states. What's more, by going with Waltz, so I think Matt here, from what I can tell, is a mm. Democrat because he views this, you know, again, the identity is the most important. Harris has abandoned the generational change contrast that a Harris-Shapiro ticket would have enjoyed against Trump. Although Waltz is just nine years older than Shapiro uh, and only months older than Harris, he presents as much older. <laughs> he, he looks yeah. a lot older than yeah. 60. Yeah. As someone who has been described as a never-Trump conservative, this is Matt Allen, mm-hmm. I must also concede that my perspective is biased in favor of a more moderate Shapiro. Nevertheless, there are thousands of politically homeless Americans yearning in vain for someone, anyone, to woo them. Yeah. <clears throat> Just the other day, a bunch of current and former Republicans endorsed Harris, presumably with the goal of winning over some disgruntled suburban soccer moms and Nikki Haley supporters. Today, that goal becomes much harder. 
rather than counterbalancing the narrative that suggests Harris is a San Francisco liberal, Walsh's selection reinforces the left-wing brand. I have to ask all of those, you know, Republicans and whatever, you know, you know, you, you, there's been a number of them. I think, think there's another one from a former Republican congressman who voted for Biden. You know, if, if you call yourself a conservative and you voted for Biden, mm. you're full of manure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you are. You were never if, a conservative. Right. If you say I'm not going to vote, okay, yeah. maybe I can accept that. Right. But if you say you're voting for a Biden yeah. or you're looking for a way to vote for Harris yeah. and you call yourself a never Trump conservative, Stop it. Yeah. Vote no. the Libertarian Party. But right. you're lying to me. Yep. You're absolutely lying you, to or me. Or you've been lying all this time about being li- a conservative. Yeah, well, exactly. Well, like Michael Steele. Yeah, exactly. Michael Steele is as far left as you can get. Yep. He used to be. He was the head of the RNC. Yep. And he's as whacked out as you can possibly yeah. get. Yeah. And you say to yourself, what in the world? And they and when you talk to all of them, none of it's issue based, they claim. They don't tell you the issues that they disagree with the Republican Party on because they can't. Right. They know where the Republican Party stands is landslide numbers on the issues that are important to Americans. Mm-hmm. Yep. But yeah, uh I I look at it and just go. With the Walsh pick, how can she flip-flop on everything? Is he going to flip-flop on everything? And will that be believable at that point? Yeah, if he flip-flops. Look, it's not believable with her. But if he goes, it's like, okay, you can stop now. 866-90-RED-EYE. This morning's USDA Farm Report is brought to you by Howes Products. Tested. Trusted. Guaranteed since 1920. Ag impacts associated with what was Hurricane Debbie? USDA meteorologist Brad Rippey says several areas in its path caught a break in that. Initially, from an agricultural standpoint, Debbie moved through about the best possible area you could take a hurricane through the southeastern United States. Meeting a path from Florida's Big Bend through southeastern Georgia cut between major ag regions. So, for example, we saw very limited impacts in Florida's citrus areas, Florida's sugarcane, and we also bypassed a lot of Georgia's major southwestern production areas for crops like peanuts and cotton. However, as Debbie's remnants travel out to sea and intensify before making landfall in South Carolina later this week. Threats to agriculture include flooding that could impact major row crops in the Carolinas and Virginia and North Carolina hog and pig farms. I'm Rod Bain reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C. This report brought to you by Cenex Fuels and Loops. Lines open for your calls. 866-90-RED-EYE on Red Eye Radio. It's Red Eye Radio. Uh, he's Eric Crowley and I'm Gary McNamara. Expect to hear uh, a portion of uh, this audio clip from Tim Waltz played consistently here this week. Mm. All right. And All right. I think seeing uh, a plan that's out there, talking about it with folks, knowing that he's not going to do anything. He, you know, he talks about this wall. I always say, let me know how high it is. If it's 25 feet, then I'll invest in the 30 foot ladder factory. That's not how you. Yeah. I'll invest right. in the 30 foot ladder factory. Ladder factory to, to, to get over the wall. Mm-hmm. You know, that's part of his radical belief. That's going to be played. And uh, again, you only attack him for a few days. Then yeah. you go, then you go after her. But, but if he's the surrogate, if she, he's the one doing most of the talking, then he's open territory. You're listening to Red Eye Radio 
from the Uniden America Studios. And he's Eric Carley, and I'm Gary McNamara. Good morning and welcome. The uh, the criticism of Waltz is it will, will go on for a couple of days, um, and then the focus, unless Waltz is the one who becomes the spokesperson for her, which is a possibility, uh, because I now believe she's afraid to speak. It's not the advice that she's being given, but she herself is afraid to answer questions. She mm-hmm. doesn't have the confidence in herself to uh, to do it, so I wouldn't be surprised. She's going to have to do it eventually, but I think Waltz may be out there for a while uh, uh, doing it. But I think by picking Waltz, what you saw yesterday, and this is the this is the thing of uh, at least to me of mostly interest, is the admission and not happy admission by so many Democrats out there that they are in a racist, anti-Semitic, pro-terrorist, Jew-hating party, and I'm going to play this. This is a uh, Van Jones uh, yesterday uh, and some of the things that he had to say. He's going Do you to think it was a little a, risky, though, Van, yeah. that, that, that she didn't go with Shapiro to kind of lock down Pennsylvania? I mean, yes, yeah. David Challing was saying earlier, just because you pick him as your running mate doesn't mean you automatically win Pennsylvania. But I got to think it would have helped just a little bit. Hey, listen, that, that the, the, the conservatives, the right wing, the Republicans, they were chewing their fingernails down to the knuckle because they were afraid of a Josh Shapiro. They were afraid of a Mark Kelly. They're not as afraid of this uh, new governor because they think they can define him. Uh, and I, but So he, here's the challenge you've got in this party. Uh, and you know, people don't want to talk about it, we've got to talk about it. On the one hand, you have a, a lot of young people who are concerned about Gaza. You have a lot of Muslims and Arabs and others. They have not felt seen by the Biden administration. Uh, you start, start hearing that genocide joke, that was building, that was building. And so those folks, needed to have a, a candidate that they could feel comfortable with. This helps them in that regard. But you also have anti-Semitism that has gotten marbled into this party. You can be you know, for uh, the Palestinians without being an anti-Jewish bigot, but there are some anti-Jewish bigots out there. And there's some disquiet now, and there has to be. How much of what just happened is caving into some of these darker parts in the party? So that's going to have to get worked out. It's going to have to be, yeah. get talked through. Now, I would disagree with them. You can't parse the two. No, no, it's yeah, uh, it, it is yeah, part and parcel. Yeah, it, it is one. It is one package. We've seen that. And and tell me. He's the first on the left. That I've seen describe it that way, but I, I still haven't seen anyone that has shown outrage against it on the left. No, I haven't no. seen any. No, Democrats could, who are outraged about it. Could you imagine if this type of racism existed in the mainstream of the Republican Party right oh, now? Man. And that's why we have said the Republicans need to take advantage of it. We've been saying it for three weeks, and it's just every single opportunity that comes along. You're being handed this on a platter. Van Jones is helping you. Yeah. That's how that's how I mean, bad it is right now. And 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 so I disagree with Van Jones. Mm-hmm. If you're saying you support the the Palestinians, don't want a peace deal. No, they don't want a two state solution. Right. So there is no. It's like who, who are you talking about specifically? You notice they can never define it. Well, they talk in the generalities. Right. They talk. By they the way, they talk in the generalities and the language that people were talking decades ago. You know, and still using the whole two-state solution thing, and the two would-be states aren't even asking for a two-state solution. That's not even on the table. Nobody's asking right. for that. And so the whole two-state solution is simply, uh, it, it's like, as I said earlier, uh, we've, we've come up with a new term for the Democrats, and this came out of the white women for Harris and the white dudes for Harris, compassionate racism. We're racist, but it's because we care about you uh, because you're inferior to us. The Democratic Party, a rainbow of whiteness. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I would have made that ad. Look at all the whiteness here. My God, can you look at all the shades of whiteness? I mean, it's seriously the racism. That's the thing that has gotten me is. Uh, and it, it's been about a, a week now 
uh, especially after the white white dudes and the white women for Harris mm-hmm. and their compassionate racism. Mm-hmm. But if it ever existed in the Republican Party to this degree, they'd be done. Oh, yeah, it'd be over. It yeah, wouldn't even be close. There, there wouldn't even be close. Yeah. It is allowed. Democrats are allowed to be racist. They this is the most blunt racism I've seen since the 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 mid 60s, uh, you know, Jim Crow Democrats right. out there. Seriously. Right. Yeah, I, I've just I've never seen such blunt racism. And by the way, the anti-Semitism, the Jew hatred is racism. Mm-hmm. Would be found that out. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's but it's it's so incredibly blatant. Van Jones is as liberal as you can get. People, we live in the bubble of today. Uh, well, many people do. We don't. We remember when Van Jones was part of the Obama administration. He was viewed as the most radical part of it. Remember? Yep. He was the guy bringing in the socialist communist ideas to the Obama administration. And he's the one talking about the Jewish hatred that exists. And now it's mainstream. How, what's my evidence? It's mainstream because now it's in their it's in their ticket. Yep, it's in their president, vice president ticket. That's why it exists. It exists for that reason. We've got to make sure that Jews are not represented on the national level because we've got our hatred towards Jews, and we yep. must appease that section of our political party, which is growing each and every day. Mm-hmm. We can't have that on the ticket, right? And the fear that Republicans had of Josh Shapiro was, as Michael Rappaport, the actor, put out there, or John Nolte from Breitbart, is what they called, quote, de mm-hmm. that he used to support Israel. And boy, what a prize it is to get. And that's what they were thinking. If we can get a Jewish vice president to denounce Israel and take the pro-Hamas side, which he has done, Josh Shapiro. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's gold for us. We can sit there and go, yeah, but a Jew says this, but a Jew says this, but a Jew says this. Wow. It's, but no, they couldn't do it, even though th- they understood it could be advantageous to them, that we can mainstream. They were thinking we might be able to mainstream our racism. Hmm. We can find a collaborator. We can find a Josh Shapiro. And it will justify our horribly racist attitudes that we have in the, in the Democratic Party. Well, and but it's it, it's the the pick for walls is further evidence of that. Yeah, we can't do that because that would still require us to put someone who is Jewish on the ticket. Yeah, and we can't risk that. No. Wow. That's and, insane. Yeah. That's insane. And and then to understand, I mean, just how radical, because, I mean, how, how could he possibly change his opinion, Josh Shapiro? Understand how radical he is. This is what he said last night. This is another audio cut that we must play, in the, and the Republicans should play it over and over again, because this is Josh Shapiro advocating uh, that, Children, there should not be age-appropriate materials. The right. children should be able to see pornography, right. sexually explicit content. And this was before they were introduced. And as you and I said, everything had to be approved before you did this. Mm-hmm. They put Josh Shapiro on. They had to make sure. Uh, so this had to be actually on the copy. This yep. had to be in the teleprompter. And so they're not lying anymore and using the line, well, Republicans wish to ban books. What the hell are you talking about? Republicans don't want to ban books. Oh, oh this goes back to Disney, age appropriate material for children? Really? Oh, so you got to lie about it. You can't be honest. Here it is. It's not freedom to tell our children what books they're allowed to read. That's not freedom. That's what, and listen to the cheers. That is the perversion that is now mainstream in the Democratic Party, the filthy perversions of Josh Shapiro and Democrats cheering in the background. They're mainstreaming. 
the brainwashing of children, their mainstreaming sexually explicit materials for children. And they're proud of it now where they're now being much more blunt and trying to uh, frame it in, oh, children need to have absolute freedom. Well, we know that's ridiculous. Children don't have freedom. We censor them all the time. Children don't need to go to school. We protect Why? them all right. the time. We protect them from things that they're not capable of processing. Right. This is the perversion in full display last night of the Democrat Party. And it's really amazing. It, it, and it's it's nothing new. They've been talking this way for years. Remember, uh, was it Terry McAuliffe? Parents have no place in the classroom. Yeah. Eric Swalwell yeah. said the same thing. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and, and, and this is the same well, attitude. You have no place. We'll teach your children what we want to teach your children in the classroom, and you have no say-so about it. Now, let's hear some Republicans on CNN uh, getting a few things to uh, say yesterday. This is Scott Jennings, but you can hear Dana Bash basically agree with them about, oh, yeah, we've discussed the anti-Semitism in the Democratic Party. Everybody knows they're the racist party, except apparently the Republicans who don't broadcast this 24-7 every single day. Well, that would be 24-7. Here it is. One of his friends uh, told me this morning that his sent. His superpower is how normal he is. Is he? I mean, I don't know. I don't know this guy. I mean, is it normal to let your biggest city in your state burn while you're the governor for four days, destroying thousands of businesses, hundreds of millions of dollars in property damage while you do nothing? Is that, does that sound normal? Is it normal for your wife to say she opened the window so she could let the smell of tire fires waft in so they could take in the smells of this radical chaos and anarchy on the streets of Minneapolis. I don't, I don't view any of that as normal. I, I, I look at this through the lens of decision making. And in two cases, they've showed us who they are. Kamala Harris absolutely bowed down to the radical left in her party by not picking Shapiro, who is Jewish. There was a nasty campaign run against him. Everybody knows it. No one wants to admit it, but everybody knows it. And she, wound, about and, she, and she very quickly heard Dana Bash say, we talked about it, mm-hmm. wound up choosing the person who was not Jewish and not as talented and not from the state that she has to win. He did a nice job tonight. Everybody can see why he was the best choice, but she couldn't do it because the party is somewhat awash in anti-Semitism. You and know, for, for Walls, when he did what he did during the riots, to me, it was him saying, I don't have the strength or the character to stand up to this anarchy. So in two big decision points for this ticket, they've showed us they will always bow down to the radical left. So I think if you if you want to talk about normal to the normal people in this country, bowing down to the radical left is not normal. It shouldn't be normal and it should be a f- flashing red light. There you go. And then we go to Lee uh, Zeldin, uh, who is also on for a uh, former uh, Republican candidate in New York that just lost by eight points. Mm. He was talking about loving your, loving your neighbors. During COVID, he had a hotline to snitch on your neighbors. There was 10,000 of these complaints that were coming in. And I would say, you know, as far as the, the weird argument and keep throwing this weird around, I mean, he was signing legislation that was requiring taxpayer-funded distribution of tampons in boys' bathrooms in elementary schools. So if you want to go there, and we're going to start have a debate about weird, I mean, it's not like he has clean hands here. Again, I think at the end of the day, though, rather than going back and forth on what's weirder, uh, I think we should just talk about who's going to solve the issues that voters say are their top issues uh, for the future of this country. Well, they brought up the weird issues, so it can be on the table. They they were the ones that, that, that had to point their finger at J.D. Vance and call him. They're still doing it. Yeah. 866-90, red eye. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll-free at 866-90-RED-EYE. It's Red Eye Radio. He is Eric Carlin. I'm Gary McNamara. 
so that's uh, where we are. We've got uh, the uh, both the parties have their 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 tickets. So we go on from here again uh, as we well, it's still the middle of the week here. It seems like it's the end of the week, but yeah, uh, it really is amazing how blatant the Jewish hatred and the racism is inside the Democratic Party. Yeah. Uh, and I just hope that the Republicans, because we all know it, they know it, you know, Van Jones knows it, Dana Bash knows it, they've discussed it on CNN, everyone knows it exists, everyone knows when you had the, and, and again, we may have more coming up as schools get back in session right in the next in the next month more oh, yeah. Yeah. of, of the, uh, the the riots everybody knows that's the filth inside of the democratic party and republicans seem to go oh we'll mention it once in a while mm-hmm. they should be pounding it every single day This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One.